Hi, today we're driving the 2020 Honda Civic. Honda refreshed this car for the 2020 model year, adding some advanced safety features to its list of standard equipment and updating the exterior styling, but just barely. Now, before we get started, I'd like to ask that if you enjoy our video reviews, please subscribe to the Car Guru's YouTube channel and share your thoughts with us in the comments section below. If you'd like to read Cliff Atia's full review of this car, head over to cargurus.com. You may have noticed that this is not your everyday run-of-the-mill Honda Civic. This is an SI trim. And since Honda started shipping Civics to the United States with those two letters, they've gathered a genuinely fanatical following. In fact, a 2000 Civic SI recently made some headlines because it sold on an auction site for $50,000. $50,000. Let's fast forward to today. We'll go through this car inside and out. We'll see how it drives and you can tell us if you think it's a future classic. As I mentioned before, Honda didn't make any dramatic changes to the 2020 Civic's exterior design. LED headlights are now standard on the SI. No doubt, these are an upgrade in terms of brightness and visibility, not to mention longevity. The front fascia adds a splash of color just above the fog light housings, and the same story is true on the rear. And I hope you like black wheels, because those are standard too, and there are no other options. Climb inside with me. You feel that? The SI's sport seats have been upgraded. It feels like better lumbar support. And there's this new design on the upholstery. Red trim along the dash and carbon fiber style inlays give the SI a genuine sport aesthetic, but it's impossible to ignore the extensive plastic throughout the cabin. It's actually kind of shocking. There is plastic all over the place. Luckily, most of the touch points are covered in fabric. It's also inconvenient that I can't get a really good resting position for my left elbow when my left hand is on the wheel. The Civic has plenty of interior room, but unfortunately the downside of that may be that it's designed for someone a bit wider than me. The simple three-spoke wheel feels great, and it's easy to understand quickly thanks to its limited controls. Isn't this a strange reality we're living in? Suddenly with modern cars, we're talking about how easy to understand the steering wheel is. You've got adaptive cruise control and lane keeping assist on the right, and radio controls and voice command buttons on the left. You can cycle through various elements on the Civic's driver information display, from turn-by-turn -turn navigation from your phone, to audio and fuel economy, to more racing-specific readouts like a G-meter and turbo boost gauges. Somewhat integrated into the dash, there's an 8-inch touchscreen. It's not my favorite. It's not blisteringly fast, and I find these buttons a bit too hard to nail with my finger. I wish they were full-size buttons, rather than these little slices. The return of the volume knob, however, is hugely welcome. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are included, so naturally I spent the majority of my time driving with my Google Pixel 3 connected and projecting. It's easy to view that decision as a criticism of the Civic's infotainment system, but really it's kind of a point of praise. Google Maps integration is so terrific with Android Auto, I'd likely use it no matter what automaker system I was testing. Heated seats are standard, but overall the climate control package is pretty basic. It's a two-zone system, so you can adjust the driver and front passenger's temperature individually. I tested this car in and out of some pretty spectacular isolated summer thunderstorms, and I had a devil of a time keeping the windshield and side windows free of fog. The Civic SI employs a 1.5-liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine that redlines at 6,500 RPM. You'll reach its peak 205 horsepower at 5,700 RPM, but you get the meaty 192 pound-feet of torque from 2,100 to 5,000 RPM. This engine is a peach. It is quick and responsive, and it wants to give you more every time your right foot rests on that accelerator. Front wheel drive sedans with this kind of engine are few and far between, and Honda's experience in this segment surely pays dividends. And the transmission, oh, the transmission. A deliberate, mechanical, notchy, and fast six-speed manual transmission provides heaping helpings of joy and purpose with every shift. P2 
people who love manual transmissions will go on and on about how they make you a better driver, they keep you engaged with the vehicle, they give your right hand purpose, blah, blah, blah. Just know that when they're talking about a manual transmission like that, they're talking about this one right here. The Civic Si is also available with Honda's high performance tire package. They're summer tires, which means they're not good on ice or snow, and they'll wear faster than your regular all-season tire. But I imagine they deliver great grip in case you're looking to autocross your Civic. The steering is well-weighted and direct. It's not so heavy, but it's also not so light as to feel over-boosted. This car might be full of plastic, but honestly, 20 minutes behind the wheel and you realize the interior is not the point for a Civic Si. The exterior is not the point. The infotainment technology, the leg room, none of that is the point. The drive is the point. And then there's the safety part. The Honda Sensing suite of advanced driver assistance systems now comes standard on the 2020 Civic Si. The most evident additions are the lane keeping assist and adaptive cruise control, but it also includes forward collision warning and automatic emergency braking, and Honda's somewhat polarizing lane watch technology. When you hit the turn signal to go right, a video feed displaying your right blind spot pops up on the touchscreen. You can also activate it or deactivate it by pressing this button on the end of the turn signal stalk. Lane watch can be super helpful, and it's a great idea in concept. I've always wondered why the system worked only for the right-hand side of the car, but after testing it for the past week, it does have some limitations. Mainly, if you're using the touchscreen for navigation, it's not great that Lane Watch completely takes over that screen every time you're about to turn right. I took a wrong turn at a tricky intersection because I hadn't taken note of the street name and I couldn't see the navigation display on the touchscreen. The beauty of a Civic Si is that like a Volkswagen GTI or a Hyundai Elantra Sport or a Kia Forte GT, the added performance comes in the same package as the regular car. If you can live with a Volkswagen Golf or a Honda Civic or a Hyundai Elantra or a Kia Forte, then you can live with a GTI, an Si, a Sport or a GT. The rear seat offers plenty of space, particularly considering the Civic's compact dimensions. Likewise, there's 15.1 cubic feet of cargo space in the trunk. The coupe cuts that number down to 12.1 cubic feet, but that's still pretty spacious for such a small car. And what more, the SI didn't hurt my wallet that badly at the pump. I was not kind to the accelerator in this car, and I still managed to get over 30 miles per gallon in combined driving. And that beats the EPA's estimate of 26 city, 36 highway, 30 combined. The Civic Si sedan and coupe both cost an even $25,000 before the destination charge, and adding the summer performance tires adds $200 to the price tag. Then there's the question of value. $25,000 is certainly in line with the market, but I can't help but feel like that money would go farther if I chose a Kia Forte GT or a Hyundai Elantra Sport. Both of those cars offer similar powertrains, albeit with a seven-speed DCT transmission, and I do prefer their interior appointments. But if you love to drive, and especially if you love to drive a manual transmission, then not much can touch the Civic Si at 25,000 bucks. The steering, the engine, the shifter, it all blends together perfectly. I took this car grocery shopping yesterday and I ended up going to a store 30 minutes from my home. The ice cream melted. It didn't matter. All I wanted to do was drive. Thank you for watching. To read Cliff Atia's full written review, head to cargurus.com. We look forward to hearing from you in the comments. See you next time.